guys, how's it going? Today I'm talking about the Razer Blade 15. This is the 2022 model with a 3080 Ti and the QHD panel with a 12800 Core i7. I've reviewed tons of laptops on this channel and I spent years testing and using all of the best laptops that ever came out. One that I've personally used the most is probably the Razer Blade 15. I bought the first model when it came out back in 2016, 2017, and I typically never really held on to it for too long. I would either return within the 30 day mark or I'd probably end up selling it between um, three to six months. The thing got so hot, it was a hazard. It didn't just get as hot as any other laptop. It actually became scalding hot to where I felt like it could cause an injury. And it also got incredibly loud, louder than any other laptop. I've used. I mean, I think the M16 is probably as loud as that thing was, but at least that thing performs. We'll get to that here. It also had terrible battery life, but every year I bought the newest Blade 15, the moment it came out, and I've seen this laptop grow and mature into the butterfly it has become today. So yeah, before I continue, just about all of these issues are way less of a problem, and there's nothing about this this year that is a deal, that's a deal breaker, except for maybe the price and that the 3080 Ti is kind of a waste on this model. For the most part, it's unchanged. I personally don't think we need a redesign on the chassis this year, unless you're like me and you've been using one every single year. But if you're looking at this, and this is your first Razer laptop, it's still better than 90% of the com competition out there, build and design wise. I recently did a review of the Gigabyte Arrow and was happy with the build and design, but it still feels more premium to me. It's one block of CNC aluminum across the entire chassis, and the grade of aluminum feels thicker and a bit robust. It's so thin too. It has to be winning some kind of award for being the thinnest laptop that actually has a 3080 Ti and either a 12th gen i7 or i9. The speaker grills are now part of that single block of aluminum. Before, there was a cutout with some mesh covering it. Okay, so speaking of the speakers, it's a bit complicated. They get louder than pretty much everything I tested and they sound crisp. And the THX audio is doing an excellent job creating a wide stage for games and movies. The only thing it's missing is bass. I mean, a lot of it. It prevents this from being among the best that I've used this year. All right guys, so now let's talk about the keyboard. Is better than previous Blade 15s based off of my memory. It's actually it's actually a pretty good typing experience for me. It seems like there's a bit more travel and the keys are springy, but I I could I could I could daily drive this. Maybe not so much for gaming, and especially compared to all the other laptops I've been using, the G76 has a significantly better keyboard. The Scar 15 does. The Gigabyte Arrow did too, except for the small keys for my somewhat larger fingers, I guess. And the G14 had a better keyboard than this, which is ridiculous. So I, I, I hope I hope that, that that we could get a much larger travel keyboard next year. I think that's the next thing that they need to iterate to this build if they don't change it. And I feel like the key the keyboard does get a bit cramped. And when I'm using the WASD key when I'm gaming, it, I don't feel confident in my movement with this laptop as I am with any other that I've used. But I like I said before, if this is your only gaming laptop, I don't think it's gonna be an issue for you. I'm just in a fortunate position where I'm able to compare a whole bunch of laptops side by side. But the trackpad on the other hand, it's close to perfect. It's tall enough and wide enough to where I can drag to anywhere on the screen without having to lift my finger. The trackpad is easy to click down and it feels very, very satisfying. You can even click down fairly close to the top corners and the top center. Unless you're a MacBook, you kind of know that you really can't do that with any other Windows laptop. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about the trackpad. The charger, I feel like I'm the only one that talks about this but it's a mandatory included accessory and sometimes the decisions that they make can be a deal breaker for me. Like for example, the cable attached to the brick is too short, then I have to keep it close to my laptop and it dangles on the table and it, 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 it becomes a bit of a hazard. And also if it's too large or too thick, then it defeats the whole purpose of having such a thin laptop. Thankfully this 230 watt brick is adequately sized it seems a bit smaller than the competition, and 
I have no problems with it. Next year, I do hope that they would go with a gallium nitride, though. I, I, I'm hoping everybody goes with the gallium nitride chargers, just so we can have a lighter overall package. And now, okay, so now onto the display. This is my favorite part to talk about. And this laptop is close to perfect in terms of the QHD 240 hertz panel. The only issue I'm having is it doesn't get as bright as some of the others that I've tested, but it makes up for it in terms of the contrast ratio and in terms of the black point. The black point it, um, I got was, was 0.25, and that's typically what you would only see in 1080p panels. 1080p. 1080p panels tend to always have a higher contrast ratio. This one's up there with at 1200 to one versus 1100 to one or 1000 to one, which is what I've kind of been seeing on all the other laptops I, I, I've been testing out. So subjectively, I, 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 I did notice that the blacks were inkier and deeper to the point where the image starts to appear like it's popping out of the screen um, in a way that like an OLED panel will. It's not, I'm not, it's not OLED levels, but it is better than the GE66 and the SCAR50 and I've tested. The only issue is it's not as bright at 307 nits versus I think the others were like 340 or 350 nits. And I, you, you, you can notice subjectively the, um, that this, that the Razer panel is a bit dimmer than the GE66 and the SCAR, but it, you know, it, it, it makes up for it in other avenues. Um, this panel also has G-Sync, and I feel like G-Sync isn't as useful at 240 hertz. I think it's better served for lower frame rates, like a, like, like, like a panel that's 144 hertz and even 165 hertz. But at 240 hertz, I don't think you're really getting all the benefits of G-Sync. And I have noticed that with Advanced Optimus, I am seeing some micro stutters, and I do tend to notice it more in... GPU bound games, so I, I'm still playing through um, Red Dead Redemption, and I do notice micro stutters. And when I was playing Halo Infinite, when I had it on ultra settings, I, I am seeing those stutters. But when I lower it down to where it actually starts taxing the CPU more, I didn't see them anymore. So I think I still think there's some more bugs that needs to be worked out, but it's fine for what it is. So and now the temperatures, they're not bad. I mean, they're, they're able to get good temperatures on this laptop because they're power limited. They're the power limit throttling it. The GPU never really goes above 72 degrees, but this is only 115 watt TGP part. But I really, really see it actually hit 150 in an actual games, more along the lines of 95 to 105 and maybe 110 occasionally. So with that being said, you're getting good temperatures, but it's because they're not giving you the full performance of the 3080 Ti, but it does help with the um, surface temperatures a lot. I can actually hold this laptop while gaming. I can game for long sessions and it doesn't get uncomfortably hot to the point where I feel like it, it can almost cause an injury. And I can actually pick this laptop up from this bottom side and hold it up indefinitely while it's under full load. Could not have done that before. The CPU throttles up to uh, to um to 99 or 100 and then goes back down. The, 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 there's like a part of me that wants to say that you're throwing your money away by getting a 3080 Ti in the Blade 15 because it's not utilizing that. And especially when I get to the performance, you'll see that you're not getting the same amount of frames as you would with the GE66 or the SCAR 15 or any other gaming laptop that has a TGP of 130 and up. But... Spoiler alert, you should probably just get a 3070 Ti. Um, there's no benefit to getting the 3080 Ti unless you're really concerned about the VRAM. The noise is okay. Under full load, it was between 58 to 62. That's standard and typical to any other gaming laptop. I do want to point out that the acoustics are a lot better on this particular model. Before, there used to be whistling sounds, and even on idle, there would just be like an uncomfortable, annoying buzzing sound that always came out of the Razer Blade 15 and it's completely gone. I feel like the silent mode is just about silent. You, you really have to put it up to ear to, be, to, to so you can barely hear the fan. So I'm, I mean, I've, I've been really happy with that. All right, guys, and before I get to the performance, I just want to touch on battery. It's typical that I, from what I've been seeing from, um, from, from the Intel 12th generation, anywhere between five to seven hours if you dim the screen and go down to 60 hertz, you can probably push even more. 
but it seems like it's fairly typical. And I have noticed that Razer seems to have a better tuning on their battery profile than they did before. Prior Blade 15s especially, and the 17s a little bit too, when you're using it in battery mode, it would slow down to the point where you couldn't even switch apps almost instantaneously. Scrolling through websites would start to stutter and it would like it looks like it would go down to like 30 FPS or something just scrolling down the website. That seems to be much improved now. It's actually fairly snappy when on battery when that wasn't the case before. So with that being said, all right guys, so I do wanna to touch on some gaming performances here. I'm gonna do a full dedicated video comparing the Razer Blade 17 with the 3080 Ti versus this Razer Blade 50 with the 3080 Ti. But just so I'm not leaving you guys in the dark, I'm gonna throw some numbers up on the screen and I'm just gonna kinda of talk through them really quickly. So just in general, what I'm noticing is at 1080p, you're more bounded by the CPU. And still, this CPU is not performing as well as the SCAR 15 or the GE76, obviously, or the GE66, or even the M16. So you're not getting top-end performance, even though you're getting top-end components in this laptop. And that's kind of why I kept on saying you should just go with the 3070 Ti unless you are a 3D renderer or creator and you know that you need 16 gigabytes of VRAM or you really, really want that 4K panel, then you're kind of stuck with having to get a 3080 Ti. So, I mean, what does this all mean though? Because this is such a thin and light package, it's not gonna perform as some of the thicker ones out there and you know what, like, there's, there's a part of me that just kind of wants to say that you're throwing away your money by getting this Blade 15 because it's not performing as well as all the laptops in its class. I feel like you're spending money on something like the Razer Blade more for the premium build and the thinness and the lightness and kind of getting into that Razer Blade ecosystem. I kind of think that they built a brand in a way that Apple did where people just tend to buy this laptop. I mean, it's a fine laptop for what it is, but you're not buying this laptop for its performance. So with that being said, um, here's some conclusions. I think this laptop is excellent. I've actually been using it a lot, but I know in my head that I'm not keeping this laptop. Uh, there's no way I could justify this price. Um, this is this in the US this is $36.99. You can get the SCAR 15 for $32.99. I don't want to compare them almost because this is much thinner, lighter. This is more of a portable companion. But then when something like the M16 is only $21.49 and it's performing almost as well as this for over a thousand dollars less, like how can I justify spending money on this? Well, obviously you're getting much better materials um, in terms of the build. And you're getting to be a part of that Razer brand, that cult as they like to call it. So if that's the kind of stuff is important to you and you're not concerned about budget, then I think this could be a good laptop for you. I just think that there's better competition out there. I mean, I have been using this almost exclusively. I have not really been using my GE76 or my G14, but I just know for me personally, I don't think I can spend the, the, the money on this. But if you have the budget for it and you're not too concerned about the performance, then absolutely go for this. All right, guys, thanks. I think that'll do it for this one.